witness some strange phenomena in the air and on the ground. Certain archaeological findings are met with much fanfare, whereas other equally shocking findings are swiftly covered up. As part of a geological survey of gold mining in the Russian Urals, a group of archaeologists came upon a plethora of weird and alien-looking micro-objects in the Kaosim, Narada, and Balbanyu rivers. Geological expeditions to the Urals have uncovered a variety of mysterious nanopieces, including metal coils, spirals, and other similar items. The odd thing is that these fragments certainly aren't a part of anything manufactured recently as they were found lodged in a rock that's at least 100,000 years old. The discovery of these hundreds of microscopic metallic fragments suggests the existence of an ancient technological society. This discovery begs a lot of questions. Was nanotechnology mastered by humans during the Pleistocene epoch? Who among the Homo erectus era had such mastery of advanced industrial science? Did a long-gone culture once inhabit Earth, or are these relics left over from extraterrestrial visitors? Join us as we explore the 100,000-year-old alien technology discovered by scientists that will convince you that the history of the planet is not what we think it to be. An upart, which means an out-of-place artifact, is a term used to describe a piece of antiquity that has been unearthed in what would seem to be an impossible or very improbable setting. U parts are typically characterized as having been made using technology that is far superior to that of the era to which they have been ascribed. U parts are seen by many as proof that conventional science is ignoring or dismissing crucial areas of knowledge. In 1991, scientists conducting geological surveys along the banks of various Russian rivers found thousands of microscopic artifacts, some of them as small as one thousandth of an inch, shaped like coils. One can only imagine the researchers' bewilderment at making such a find while conducting mineralogical studies for prospecting in the Ural Highlands. These thousands of items dating back to the Pleistocene Epoch, which began around 2 million years ago and ended around 12,000 years ago, and were discovered at a number of different locations in Ural, ranging in depth from 10 to 40 feet. Copper is used for the larger ones, while tungsten or molybdenum is used for the smaller ones. Their relative melting points of 6,170 degrees Fahrenheit and 4,784 degrees Fahrenheit demonstrate industrial technology. They range in size from 1.18 inches in length to 2.5 microns on the tiniest end. The width of a human hair, as a point of reference, is typically around 100 microns. Copper is used for the larger coils, whereas tungsten or molybdenum is used for the smaller ones. Unlike shards of metal found in nature, these appear to be components from the realm of nanotechnology. These errors have created a discussion that has yet to die down. Microscopic structures have been dated to 300,000 years old, adding to the mystery surrounding them. Is the presence of these artifacts proof that a sophisticated civilization once existed on Earth or that another intelligence currently occupies the same location? Their ages range from 20,000 to 318,000 years, depending on the location and depth of their discovery. No matter how long the time gap is, our prehistorians still believe that there was no man in Oral 300,000 years ago. 20,000 years ago, when man still relied on hitting flints together to make fire, he had not yet developed agriculture. Who then created these man-made miniature replicas? Where do they originate from? For what purpose did they exist? These simple inquiries devise simple solutions. The many well-known restrictions of our contemporary society have delayed the development of nanotechnology until recently. The standard scientific view does not credit prehistoric humans with any more advanced technology than the occasional usage of fire. Since no known technique is capable of producing such artifacts, scientists have been unable to pinpoint who or what is responsible for their creation. A survey by the Moscow Institute found that the structures were far too old to have come from modern production, despite claims that they are only the remnants of test rockets launched from the nearby Plesetsk space station. Even if the components are thousands of years old, they have a technological origin, according to a 1996 article by Dr. E. W. Matveheva of Moscow's Central Scientific Research Department of Geology and Exploitation of Precious Metals. Some Finnish and Russian research facilities have confirmed that the coil-shaped objects are artificial and quite old. 
Extensive studies were conducted on these out-of-the-ordinary substances at research facilities in Helsinki, St. Petersburg, and Moscow. Now scientists know for sure that metals didn't just appear out of thin air. They've clearly created components with a technological origin. At first, it was thought that the macro and nano objects were pieces of missiles that had crashed near the Plesetsk launch site. However, a paper from 1996 disproved that theory, stating that the depth at which these structures were discovered made that hypothesis impossible. The Urals have been linked to a number of strange occurrences since World War II, the most well-known of which is the Dyatlov Pass incident, in which a group of professional Russian hikers were discovered dead under puzzling circumstances. Though various ideas have been proposed since then, the incident itself remains unclear. Numerous UFO sightings have also been reported in the vicinity. Some believe these artifacts are evidence that humans had a technologically advanced period during the Pleistocene, Ice Age, while others believe they are the product of extraterrestrial beings. The number of these little pieces discovered by the Russians is in the thousands. They discovered them in an area devoid of human habitation or ruins. Where did all these little things come from? The fact that they are all clustered within a radius of a few hundred yards suggests an accidental cause, such as a malfunctioning bomb. A spaceship's aborted landing is another example. How about a machine, a spaceship back then? Are they made using precious metals that have a high melting point? These little objects were most certainly not crafted by human hands. They could only have been mass-produced by a technological society like ours. Russian researchers therefore acknowledge the possibility of advanced civilizations before our own. This scientific orthodoxy, carved in marble, is held even by Russian researchers. When something unusual is discovered in the archives of history, archaeology, or paleontology, we call it an OA part because we don't know anything about it. These artifacts were unearthed at inappropriate times and in inappropriate locations, calling into question the accepted narrative of past events. Many people believe OU parts may demonstrate that humanity had a different degree of civilization or sophistication than that stated and comprehended by officials and scientists. Despite the fact that academics have always formed a simple and sensible conclusion concerning these odd objects, there are others that attribute OU parts very existence to alien intelligence. Antikythera Mechanism, Main Penny, Shroud of Turin, Baghdad Battery, Sakura Bird, Ica Stone, Stone Balls of Costa Rica, London Hammer, and many more are just a few of the OU parts that have been discovered. Coal was formed between 360 and 290 million years ago, according to the World Coal Association. Therefore, it seems utterly implausible that any human artifacts could be discovered within this ancient substance. However, amazingly, many items have reportedly been found in such deposits, either buried within the coal itself or found buried deep down within coal veins found in mines which have been tunneled out far beneath the Earth's surface. Some of the most baffling and mysterious artifacts are OO parts discovered in coal and stone. According to the Illinois State Geological Survey, coal from a South Illinois mine formed between 260 and 320 million years ago during the Carboniferous period. On June 11, 1891, a newspaper in Illinois reported the unusual discovery of a modern artifact embedded in a lump of coal from that mine. Mrs. S.W. stumbled upon this peculiar artifact when she was preparing a lump of coal for the scuttle, and when the lump crumbled, saw a small gold chain, perhaps 10 inches in length, embedded in a circular form. The report states that at first, Mrs. Culp thought the chain had fallen into the coal container, but when going to retrieve it, she discovered that it was still tied to the coal. The circular arrangement of the chain brought the two ends close to each other, and as the coal broke, the middle of the chain became loosened while each end remained fastened to the coal, immediately disproving the notion that it had been recently dropped. If we grant that this artifact was made by humans hundreds of millions of years ago, then we must ask the most improbable of questions. Whether or not the thing was actually found inside the coal and not just alongside it. Coal may also have had its geological age determined. If these two things are what they seem to be, then the place of civilized man in history is called into question. In 1944, Newton Richard Anderson, then 10 years old, discovered another strange and anomalous coal discovery. When Anderson went downstairs to stoke the fire at his Buchanan, West Virginia, home one night, he chose an especially huge piece of coal, adding it to the pile he had previously amassed on his shovel. The heavy object wobbled and collapsed, breaking in two when it landed on the concrete floor. 
A thin metallic object stuck out of one of the shattered halves, so the curious lad set that half aside and threw the other half into the fire. The bituminous coal lump was mined in Upshur County not far from Anderson's house, and he used a croquet mallet to break it apart. Inside was what looked like a small, elegant brass bell with an iron clapper, which he then cleaned with lye and a scouring brush. Once again, estimates place the age of the coal in the mine at roughly 300 million years. Neutron Activation Analysis NAA, a nuclear process used to determine the concentrations of elements in various materials, was used to analyze the bell and found an unusual combination of metals, including copper, tin, iodine, zinc, and selenium, indicating that the bell's alloy was unlike any currently produced. In 2007, Newton Anderson submitted to a polygraph examination to back up his statements. Ganta bells are used in worship in India, Tibet, and Nepal, and Anderson's discovery of a figure atop the bell has a striking resemblance to the Hindu deity Garuda. These bells often include a sculpted figure and are crafted from brass. The step design, ripped grip, and kneeling figure on the platform can be seen on both Anderson's bell and the Nepalese bell depicting a winged figure praying. The latter is dated to between the 18th and 19th centuries according to various sources. Could the strange artifact found in a piece of coal reflect Vedic influence in North America from several hundred million years ago? Following the strict framework of Darwinist philosophy, this may seem entirely improbable, but such long-term durations are consistent with Vedic literature. Meanwhile, in 1954, Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardashev devised a way to estimate a civilization's level of technological development given its wealth. His system, which he dubbed the Kardashev Scale, assigns each civilization a numerical classification from Type 1, the most primitive, to Type 5, the most advanced. Does that imply there has never been a society on Earth that fits those descriptions? Scientists thought humanity was the first advanced civilization, but archaeology shows that Earth's soil actually supported a more advanced culture long ago. An odd rock item unearthed in Russia's Krasnodar Krai provides clues to the ancient civilization's level of technological development. A fisherman named Viktor Morozov in the Russian city of Labinsk, Krasnodar Krai, discovered an ancient rock in the Kots River in 2013. The stone included an artifact resembling a microchip, the origin of which has sparked controversy among scientists. Scientists determined the stone was 250 million years old after studying it. In addition, they found that the ancient society utilized the artifact in the same way that we use contemporary chips today. Despite the passage of time, this mystery remains unsolved by scientists, making the original incident still relevant today. Since carbon is the only dependable substance containing organic stuff, it is impossible to verify the exact age of any stone using current technology. As a result, the presence of organic residue around the embedded microchip provides a rough estimate of its age. Morozov stumbled into the mystery microchip while out fishing. The researchers at South Russian State Technical University ran a battery of tests on the chip without extracting it from the stone after he picked it up and brought it to them. The findings revealed that the ancient specimen measured 15 by 11 by 4.5 centimeters and had a gray-brown tint. Fragments of the bones of crinoids, a kind of marine organisms that are classified as echinoderms, make up this organogenic material. Matt Hinn of the Comenius University in Bratislava, who specializes in geology and paleontology, recognized it as a cross-section of a crinoid, a marine invertebrate related to sea urchins and starfish. In addition, researchers at the Institute in 2014 stated confidently that the stone's geochronological age could be as old as 410 million years. This suggests the stone dates back to the Silurian era. After handing over the stone, researchers at the Nanotechnology Center could examine it in further detail. Some experts have likened the object lodged in the stone to a punch card from the 1980s, while others have said it most closely resembles a current microchip. A piece of a sea lily that successfully blended with the rock 450 million years ago and has been preserved there ever since is what some scientists believe the strange relic in the stone to be. Some academics have speculated more boldly, suggesting that the microchip dates back to the time of ancient, technologically advanced civilizations and has been preserved in stone ever since. This artifact provides more questions than answers because some experts suspect it represents a technology that is yet unknown to modern scientists. Have you ever considered the possibility that, long after humanity has vanished from Earth, another species might evolve to reach our level of intelligence? 
If you ask us, raccoons make the perfect candidates for that position. Perhaps in the year 70 million, a family of masked furballs will be sitting in front of Mountain Rushmore, roasting marshmallows over a fire they built with their opposable thumbs and wondering what kind of creatures carved that mountain. Hold for a second. Do you really think Mountain Rushmore could last that long? Suppose we're the raccoons, though. In other words, would we even know about the presence of a highly superior species that ruled Earth during the time of the dinosaurs? Unless you think scientists aren't nerds, this is known as the Silurian Hypothesis, after a race of aliens from Doctor Who, that there may have been other sentient life forms on Earth before humans, and that if there were, almost all traces of them would have been lost in the intervening 100 million years. It might seem clear that we would find evidence of such a culture. After all, we know there were dinosaurs 100 million years ago since fossils have been discovered. However, they survived for about 150 million years. That's significant because it has implications beyond the age and breadth of the imaginary civilization's ruins. The length of time it existed is also relevant. In just over 100,000 years, humanity has managed to colonize every continent. If more species followed this pattern, it would be far more difficult to identify them in the fossil record. You probably don't need us to remind you that humans are already leaving a lasting impression on Earth. Plastic, even as it disintegrates, leaves behind microscopic pieces that remain in the sediment for eons. Even if they do stick around for a while, locating that minuscule layer of plastic shards could be tricky. Looking for times when carbon levels were unusually high may prove more fruitful. The current geologic epoch, called the Anthropocene, is defined by the global dominance of humans. Time is just another dimension, therefore traveling through it is theoretically feasible in relativity physics. This means that future generations will be able to trace our travels through the ages and uncover current artifacts such as nails, screws, and other man-made objects. We may very well unearth the artifacts they left behind long before our descendants are born. Wow! Paradoxes in time are a breath of fresh air. Furthermore, UFOs could be spaceships from the distant future of Earth. Surely they could. They, the so-called extraterrestrials, could be our great-grandkids for all we know. They certainly are strange-looking, but are they actually natural given the amount of chemicals we release on Earth? As expected, they evolved. They were trapped. Yet, they do not forget. They want to see how their ancestors lived before the New Deal and total atomization changed everything. Maybe they need our tissues and organs to treat the cancers our nuclear waste gave them. Yes, of course, other explanations for this ancient technology do exist, although they do call for more creativity than is typically applied in archaeology. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.